just my luck. The sky turns grey and starts raining just as I'm about to start filming. Hello everyone, my name is Jonathan and this is Jonathan's Days, which is a knitting podcast here on YouTube where I share all about what I've been up to in my knitting world. And welcome back to everyone and hello to everyone new. We've seen a little uptick in subscribers in the last month or so, which is super exciting. So uh, if you're new, I'm going to just like jump straight in. And if you're old and been here a while, then welcome back and let's get going. I'm going to jump right in with my first finished object, which I'm wearing. And um, this is the Cassis vest by Midori Hirose. And I knit this out of Durerum Natura Gilead and dyed by La Bienemi. And the color is Yona, I believe, which I found out somebody commented that it is a color dyed, was named after one of the editors of Lina magazine, which I didn't know. And um, this pattern is actually from Lina magazine, it's from the latest issue. So I thought it was like, Funny that I, that was the color I chose when it was named after someone from Lina magazine. And so I will stand up so you can just take a look at the details. And it, it is because it's dark, it's kind of a little bit tougher to see. But it's not uh, super, super oversized in, um, oh, I've got a bit of something there. There you go. It's a pretty accurate color. And um, so it's in the actual magazine, it's quite... They've done it quite oversized. I didn't want it to be super, super oversized. I wanted it to be quite fitted. I think this is the third size, perhaps. Second or third size is on the lower range of the sizes uh, because I didn't really want it to be oversized. But I did want it to be like a slip over loose um, item that I would wear. And uh, I love the color. I, I didn't alternate skeins. Wait, let me get it to blow out a bit. Maybe you can see. The kind of, it's not too bad, it's not too bad. I'm gonna get this white piece of fluff that's been bothering me. There you go. So you can see this kind of like variegation, it's a tonal color, which I don't mind, I quite like. And I'm actually gonna reach over and grab what I had left over so you might get a, a better look at it. So this is what I had left over. They, I got three skeins of this, and this is how much I had left, which is, which is a very decent amount actually. I haven't weighed it, um, but I might try the Gilead again. I, it's what I would say about this is that it is very. It like holds its shape, and it doesn't really have much coming off of it as a fiber, when it's a yarn. So it's not like I guess if you were sensitive to yarn or to wool, this wouldn't be. Uh, it is woolen spun, I believe, but it almost feels like a worsted spun. Um, which is kind of odd. So it's quite lightweight, which I, I do quite like. And I, so yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not like obsessed with it as a yarn, but I'm very much intrigued by it. So I think I might try using it again, maybe using one of the um, colors from Gilead rather than, or from the Ramnator, rather than one dyed by La Bienname, just to see if there's any difference in the process, like how it feels or in the process. Um, I said this in the last episode, I enjoyed making this so, so much. It was a really, really enjoyable knit. It's on, I think, six millimeter needles, so it goes quite quickly. I could definitely see myself making a second one. And I've been wearing it a ton. Uh, I've, I'm actually, like, I'm not sure if I make another one, but I'll definitely make another slip over because I know we're only in February, but I'm also kind of like getting sad that eventually it's going to get warmer and I won't be able to wear as many jumpers and sweaters and knits as I used to or have been able to so I am kind of already thinking okay what's the kind of like transitional wardrobe and something like this really is perfect for that so I think I might make another one of either this or another slip over and something else because I've really been enjoying like styling it and wearing it and it's like super comfortable I feel like this is a garment that will last me a long time like it feels really sturdy and nice and the other thing is the construction. I probably mentioned that in the last episode. It was like really different from anything I'd ever done before. Um, not gonna give away too much special sauce, but you kind of do like the back front 
start with either the back or the front, then you kind of go over the shoulders and do the front and then down the body. So it's almost like you knit in pieces, but then stick them together and then eventually you're going um, top down on the body. So uh, yeah, and it's got like this really nice texture here, which I really, really like. And I can't say enough about it. I've This is the second Midori Hiroshi pattern I've knit and I really want to make another one. And I just enjoy, I don't know, it's one of those things you kind of like, you'll know with me, I, there's certain designers that you just kind of like, you can get to tell that you kind of think similarly and you have a similar thought process. So it's fun to make those patterns. Whereas other people like, you know, you know we're all different. We all kind of uh, work through things and realize things in different ways. So I think that she's definitely a designer that I like gel with. So looking forward to doing more. I've been getting a load of wear out of this. What else can I say about it? Oh, there is an option to do like a roll neck. So, I mean, I'm wearing a <laughs> this, which, so you could do it where it would be like that. And I think you could probably stick sleeves on it fairly easily if you liked, wanted to make it a full sweater. Um, and it is in the latest issue of Liner Magazine. I can't think what number it is. There's no way I'm reading that back there, but it is. <laughs> it's there. It's the like blue colored issue, the latest issue. Um, so yeah, this is the Cassis. I love it. I'm super excited to make similar um, objects like this. Yeah. And I spoke a lot about it in the previous episode. So if you want more details and you want to see it halfway done, you can jump back to the previous episode. Uh, next finished object. So I have a lot of knitting to show you. Probably should have said this. I have a lot of knitting to show you because the last episode I shot straight after I did my year roundup. So really I haven't filled you in on anything for about five weeks maybe, maybe even six weeks. So I have a lot to catch you up on. And I was almost finished this uh, in the previous episode. So my next FO, I didn't think that I would have had it finished, but I got COVID. And so I was home for 10 days, 11 days. Uh, so I had, I was knitting full time. I was knitting like 14 times a day, 14 hours a day. And uh, I was absolutely fine. I had no symptoms at all, asymptomatic, three, I have two, the two vaccines and a booster. So thank you to that for, you know, giving me absolutely no problem uh, when I had it. So it meant I was well enough to knit the whole time. And so I cast on two items. So one is I've finished and the other one is a work in progress, which I'll show in a second. And you knew about this, that this was coming because, oh, let me pull out my project bag, which I need to clear out actually. Um, so I showed this a while back. So this is a swatch I made a while back, a long time ago actually for the hide and peak sweater by Maxims here, which is what I'm going to show you. So this is just like a color work, like this was me check, like practicing the color work a little bit when I, so I had just finished a color work project and I wanted to keep that kind of color work energy going, which is why I swatched then, because it was one of those things where I was in a good rhythm with color work. So I thought that doing a swatch then was a good idea because if I'd stopped doing color work for a while and then jumped into doing the swatch, my gauge might have been different, like my comfortable color work gauge might have been different. So when I finished that project, I immediately swatched so that it would get me like a more accurate gauge for once I'd settled into color work, if that makes sense. You know, um, gauge swatching and tension squares and things like that, like, you know, they're not a perfect science. And for me, it's just trying to get as close as I can um, to a comfortable fit for what I want. So this was a swatch. And so having 10 days to sit and work on this, I uh, managed to finish my entire hide and peak sweater. So here it is. Uh, I'm so happy with it. It's one of those things of like, whatever your last FO is tends to be your favorite thing, but like, this is definitely my, <laughs> my favorite so far. I'm really, really proud of it. Um, so let me get up and close and personal so you can see. So this is by Maxim Sear, Max the Knitter, who if you've watched my episodes, you know I'm a huge fan of. 
Um, it is knit out of Walcott Yarns Opus and kind of the reason why I used Opus for this pattern is because when Max was doing a like Instagram live with uh, Carmen from Walcott Yarns and the Yarn Story, they were, talk they were talking about the Opus shawl at that time. And then Max literally mentioned, oh yeah, the Opus is a sport weight, so you could make the hide and peak sweater with this yarn. And so instantly I was like, I'm gonna make the hide and peak with this sweater. And when I made my Opus shawl, I had loads of uh, this pink color, love potion left over and I actually had splash white the white color left over so I was like okay there's two colors that I need for the hide and peak done so then when I visited a yarn story I picked up the other two colors so which are goldenrod and then cove is the main color the teal and that's kind of what how it happens uh, so it's kind of like the scraps from the project from the previous project being used in something like this, which I just love that I was able to use uh, use up stuff left over from another project in, into the next, which was really exciting. Um, I was going for kind of an 80s vibe with the colors and this the original intention was to make this for a ski trip I have coming up in March, uh, which is a, a 2020 ski trip, which was push back and push back so hopefully this year we'll get to go but I wanted to make this for that because first of all it's called hide and peak skiing you're on a peak skiing you get that and then also like you know I always think of like the 80s when I think of skiing like snowsuits and apres ski and I felt like these colors were very very that and the yeah and that's why I wanted to use the white because it like I wanted to it to literally look like snowy peaks so um I was so like happy with the colors you'll so if I hold up the swatch you'll see I changed the colors if I can get this um, from the swatch so in the swatch I had the white as the first color but I flipped it with the pink so the pink is the first color and then the white kind of becomes uh, almost the main contrast color I would say and then I also use the white on the uh, the little cuff detail. And this is a big topic for today. I did the tubular bind off, you guys. So this is the tubular bind off I did, or I think it's also called Italian bind off. I think it's just, I'm pretty sure it's the same thing. Um, and I did it everywhere. I did it on both sleeves and the hem. I knit the body first for this one. I believe it is 3.75 millimeter needles as the with, with as like call for in the pattern which is the same gauge as the opus shawl actually. Um, and so I knit the body first. Usually I knit sleeves first and then the body um, but I didn't have the needles to do the sleeve so I was waiting for those to come through. And so I did the body first and I kind of messed up the tubular bind off like at the very start, which was a shame because it was also like, it's like the front right hip of the bind off. But I got my rhythm and figured it out eventually. So then the sleeves are actually, I'm pretty proud of how the sleeves look. Um, I pretty much hate doing it. I just hate some bind offs in general. I hate, you know, this motion. And I also hate how like, you have to use so like if you don't want to keep attaching yarn you have to kind of have such a long length of yarn to do it especially if, like for this for like and um, the ribbing at the bottom so i just like doing it do i love the result yeah 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 i really really love the result i think it looks beautiful and i've actually done it on some socks as well which i'll show in a second so yes i'm converted i will be doing the tubular bind off now whenever i have a one by one ribbed garment um, but I kind of hate doing it. It's worth it. It's worth it. Um, what else do I want to say about this? The fit is perfect. I will wear it in my next episode on, so you can see it on. I have to get pictures taken, proper pictures. I haven't done that either. Um, but there was kind of a rush to make this because I would wanted it to be finished for the Unravel Festival, which happened last week. I'm going to do a separate like bonus episode, extra episode, all about Unravel. And I'll wear this and I'll talk uh, about what I got there and who I met there and all that good stuff. But um, 
So when I got COVID, I was like, oh my God, I'm going to be home for like at least 10 days isolating. I think I could cast this on and get it finished for Unravel. And because Walcott Yarns were um, exhibiting there, um, it would be nice to like get it finished for that and wear it to Unravel. So that's what I did. So I was really, really proud of it. It's so soft, you guys. It's so soft. I like absolutely love love the feel of it like even holding it now you can see like I'm just like oh, it's so good um I love the colors I think they really suit me and um, when I pick when I picked the colors for this it was Opus's first 10 or 10 colors I think they had in their first kind of round and since then they I think they have 10 8 or 10 more colors so there's even more um colors to choose from if you did want to make this pattern or any of the pat or the Opus shawl itself um the other thing I was going to say is that I have tons left over. I have a full skein of Cove plus this. This white was left over from my Opus shawl and I still have this left. I have this much goldenrod left over and a little bit of love potion left over. So the love potion has fallen and, and rolled that way so I'm not going to get it. So I have tons, tons left. So I could, I could make the hat. There's the matching hide, hide and peek hat, but I have an entire skein of this. So I'm not sure if I will, um, but we'll see, we'll see. And so the color work itself. So this is my second um, color work yoke sweater. I enjoyed this color work so much. The one by one color work, I, find it so meditative and so enjoyable to knit so i was really really looking forward to any of the rows um like these rows here any of the rows where you see the one by one i just enjoyed it so much there are like long floats you can obviously tell here like there's going to be long floats in those sections i catch my floats every three stitches it's just the rhythm i've really gotten into and it i think it looks pretty good if I go super close, you can kind of see, especially in the white here, for example, there's places where you can see I've caught the float and the yellow kind of pokes through a bit and it doesn't really bother me. You don't really see it that often, but I guess it is something to kind of take note of with any color work that when you're using two colors together and um, that are like super high contrast like a white and a dark it's going to um it's going to there's a chance it might poke through but in general i think it's okay i can show you the float i love i know people love looking at floats but I'm, i don't really mine aren't super interesting because i catch my floats so often i don't think it's like super pretty or super interesting and the other interesting thing that i did do which is I did this, which is, you're like, Jonathan, what is that? This is, I found this on a random video on YouTube. I think it's a nitpicks video, which is like a Fair Isle um, braid, or like if you're doing Fair Isle color work, you just literally, rather than weaving in your ends, you just literally braid them, like almost like a French braid. And... I would say this would probably only be something I would recommend with a non-superwash yarn. But because the kind of goal is that eventually the non-superwash yarn kind of like felts together essentially through wear um, and just kind of lays flat. And I've worn this twice now. Like, where I don't even know which side it's on. Okay, so it's on like this side and you can't see it, you can't feel it when you're wearing it at all. It's, yeah, it's kind of an experiment, I guess, and I'll see if it works out in the long run. Worst case scenario, I just undo the braid and weave them in normally, but at that point, I was just like tired and <laughs> just wanted it to be finished. So I just wove, like braided them together with a little bit of extra length and then blocked it. And then, yeah, so they, they seem to be, you can't really see it when I'm wearing it and they're not really sticking through or anything like that. So I'm pretty happy with it. I'm sure some people are like, oh my God, that's awful. How could you do that? But why not? Nobody's seeing it. 
So yeah, so that's my hide and peek. Um, really, really in love with it. I'm gonna hold it up one more time. Um, I've said a million times, Max patterns are wonderful and a pleasure to knit, and this is absolutely no exception. I have done and will continue to enjoy his amazing design work. So thank you, Max, for making such a wonderful pattern. And um, the Opus yarn is wonderful. And they have a new base, which I will talk about in my next episode, or my Unravel episode, because I, of course, have to get some to try out. Um, so yeah, that's the hide and peek. Love it. Um, yeah, I think that's everything I have to say about this. I'll be wearing it in the next episode anyway, so if I forget anything, I will mention it. Then, okay, there was a car alarm going off. Oh my god, it was so annoying. But hopefully it won't go off again, and we can keep going. So my next object is a half-finished object, and this is it. This is the Curio Sock. This is by Andrea Maori, and it is knit up in the main color, which is on the heel and the toe, is uh, Retrosaria uh, Mondim in the color 300, I believe. And then the contrast color, which is all the color change, is Spin Cycle Dyed in the Wool in the color Robin's Egg. So I finished this one since the last time, and I've done the tubular bind off on the top of that. And um, I love this color. I love the Mondim. I think I've mentioned the last time. You can see a mistake here. Look at the little mistake I made. Uh, I think I mentioned last time that I really want to do a like a sweater in this in this type of yarn or this yarn. I love the color and I love the feeling of it. It would be. I know it's a sock yarn, but like, why not? So what? Who cares? And then this is the second sock that I have. Um, you can see like a ton of the blue came through on this one, so it's not as blue in parts here, but this one's really, really blue, which is the fun spin cycle. It is a afterthought heel, so that's my waist yarn in there that I will pull out and knit up the afterthought heel. Um, don't have a huge amount to say about this because I've, this is my second pair, so you would have seen, you would have heard me talk about it a lot. Um, so I've been wearing my other pair, which they fit really well and they feel really, really good. It's interesting to have... Oh, there's, mm, there was the alarm. I don't know if you heard it. Hopefully it stops. I'm just going to keep talking. Um, they fit really well. It's interesting because it's a non-superwash and superwash yarn, like, together, striped almost. So I'm interested to kind of see how that works out in the long run. But, you know, stay tuned. I will report back. Uh... I describe these as a vanilla plus sock because the like this is just um, slip stitching and then uh, changing colors like it's really really easy and enjoyable so if you've kind of made one pair of socks or two pairs of socks and you want to try something a little bit more difficult but not super super difficult then this would be a great pattern to try I think and it's toe up in case you couldn't tell and yeah, I love it. It's my lunchtime knitting and I'm really kind of focused now and just kind of getting this finished off. I'm probably a little bit over a third of the way up the leg and I'm, I really want to push to get this done soon because I want to take a sock break. Not that I don't enjoy making socks, but um, as I mentioned earlier, there's a ski trip and there's a couple of items that I want to make in preparation for that. So that is the plan to finish these socks and then I have a couple of accessories that I want to kind of knock out before um, we travel so having uh, no socks because you know I love making socks but they are time consuming and when they are my there's the alarm I'm sorry guys when they are my lunchtime knitting like they don't they don't get they don't move very fast like I don't make them very very quickly uh, so because there's almost as many stitches in a pair of socks as like something like this. So it just, when it's only kind of about 45 minutes a day of lunch knitting, if that, then it is difficult to kind of, uh, you know, it just takes a long time. So you don't get a lot done. So if I was making something else like a hat or a cowl, I would be able to get those done quite quickly. So that's why once these socks are done, I will be working on some accessories for um, my trip. 
and uh, once the trip actually happens, I'll probably cast on another pair of socks for the trip because they're perfect for traveling. Uh, is a pair of socks because they're quite small and portable. So yeah, and then they're in my hide and hammer bag. All my knitting bags are hide and hammer bags. The smaller one is the 08 and the bigger one is the 03, just so you know. And next whip is living in my, this is like my home project and this is a Carhartt tool bag. Um, not meant for knitting, but it, it does the job for me. And all my um, pins from Le Garçon are on it and a couple of other ones are on it as well if you haven't seen it before. And this cast on, I mentioned in my previous episode that I was doing very much just socks and sweaters um, with my projects and I kind of wanted to have something else on the needles, like a shawl, like not something that I was like pressing myself to kind of like knock out in three weeks just so that it would be done in time for the next podcast, but something that I could kind of work on at my leisure that was kind of a break from something else from like this main sweater knitting. Ooh, is that a preview? And so I, very long time viewers of those of you, those wonderful people who went back and binged all my episodes will know this yarn because I picked this up in Wild and Woolly um, last year. So it was quite old, a long time ago. So this is uh, Studio Donegal Darnie and the four colors are all numbers. So I will have them on the screen and down below, <laughs> but yeah, they're just, they're just numbers like 880 or something, 8808 and something. They're not actually named after something like that. So, um, yeah, so I picked this up along last year from Wild and Woolly, which is a, a yarn store here in London with the intention to cast on this project. And I finally did because kind of one of the things I want to do is, you know, knit my stash, like, you know, I try not to buy yarn just for the sake of buying it. It does happen, particularly with when I travel, but I do have lots of like, like this, like four skeins of yarn that are designated for a project and I've been sitting for a while. So I want to make the project. And so I cast it on. So here it is. This is the Woven Chevron Shawl by Stephen West. Let me get up close and personal. So yeah, I've, I've been drawn to this pattern for a very, very long time. It is kind of what I like in a shawl, which is like graphic kind of knitting um, that is like really not something that you'd find that you could buy. Like it's definitely something you could tell is like hand knit because it's like, it's something that has to be hand knit but it looks like it's machine made, if that makes sense. Like an individual would be like, oh, you've made that because it's like with slip stitches and stuff like that. Whereas someone else would think, oh, that machine has made that. So that's the kind of, that's the kind of shawls I like. Um, so I picked the beige color to be kind of the main color and then the white, the turquoise and navy to be the contrast colors. And I'm just really enjoying how it's turning out. The yarn is like super rustic and it's got uh, like flecks in it, apart from the white doesn't have many flecks. And particularly in the teal, there's like flecks of yellow, which are kind of picked up in the beige color, which I really, really enjoy. It's a super, super like fun knit because you're really only doing about six rows per color before changing color, which is really, really like, you know, it keeps it interesting and you can memorize the pattern pretty, pretty well. And I've just been really enjoying kind of working on it at my leisure. So I've got three repeats done and the total is nine, I believe in the pattern. You can kind of go as long as you want or stop as when you want. So my plan is to only show this to you guys every kind of three repeats. So then I'll show you again when it's like six, so you can, it'll probably be a lot bigger and then nine when it's finished. So I'm not going to be showing this to you every week once I've done a little bit of work on it or every episode because I'm just kind of working at it on it as and when I feel like it. Um, yeah, so it's, it's really, really enjoyable. What else am I going to say about it? The ends are ridiculous. Um, I am doing the Weave and Steven method where you kind of like flick the old color as you knit over. Just look up Weave and Steven. Um, 
and it's fine for me it works out fine but it i mean in this moment it's a bit annoying because there's all these da ends dangling so for the podcast it doesn't look very beautiful but it's fine it doesn't bother me too much and what else was going to say about the weaving steven yeah so you are cutting the yarn every six apart from the main color you're cutting yarn every six rows so um that's something to be aware of if that's something you really don't enjoy doing then that's that it's you can't you can't really carry the contrasting color either because you'd be carrying it up a very long way i mean you could but i probably wouldn't i wouldn't recommend it they don't recommend it in the pattern so i haven't it it, it doesn't bother me um and then what was the other thing i was going to say about this oh yeah so the construction is really really cool because basically and you can look this up on youtube it is a paid for pattern but you can look up the technique on youtube because there's a demonstration so you start with an i chord and basically you knit up and then you do another i chord and then you knit up and another i chord so at right now i'm just about to do another i chord border so this part here if i get my eyes out of the camera is like the i chord right down here at the bottom and you knit up from that so it's quite fun actually because you know you're adding on like a ton of stitches like all of a sudden so it's like a construction unlike anything else i've ever done so that aspect of it i've really enjoyed it um and it's one of those things now just as i'm like touching it i'm just like oh i could just you know bash out a quick row here but i'm not going to i'm going to keep talking to you but I really, really like it. Uh, the yarn is like super rustic and like fun. Um, yeah, like Studio Donegal, I know that they, um, obviously the yarn can be used for knitting, but they, a lot of their yarns they kind of recommend for weaving as well, which is quite cool because you kind of forget that yarn can be used for a lot of different crafts, not just knitting. Um, and I just really, really like it. And what else was I gonna say on this? Yeah, I'm enjoying it so much. It's just been nice to have a project that I'm not putting pressure on myself to finish, that I'm just kind of enjoying the process. Uh, yeah, so I think this is definitely a process knit. I would, I will wear it, uh, but I don't wear shawls, my shawls a ton. But uh, I'm excited to have it done uh, eventually. It will get very, very long very, very quickly because you're adding a good bunch of, bunch of stitches on. And yeah, I highly recommend it. It's it's very it's just very different. If you want something different and something with a fun process, this is something I would really really recommend. So yeah, this was also I believe part of the hybrid knit along a couple of years ago, and, and so Steam West does the mystery knit along, which usually is like like September October I believe, and then towards Christmas and New Year's he does the hybrid knit along, which is kind of like oh you're supposed to cast on and just like hibernate and make a nice shawl. And in general, I have always preferred the hybrid knit along patterns to the mystery knit along patterns. Because there's the one now this year, which was the cable trellis shawl, and I love it. It's so cool. So, in my experience, I like these ones a lot. So, yeah, so that is my woven chevrons. Super happy with it, super excited about it, just really enjoying it it's staying in this kind of bag here and it just sits next to the couch and i kind of bash out um a, a, a section whenever i feel like it so i've really really been enjoying that so yeah so that is whip number two at the moment yes and whip number three is something you haven't seen at all i don't even think you've seen the yarn for it um so yes yeah, so this episode is very much kind of like things from nowhere coming out to being done. So I know people kind of like to see the journey of how I get on as I'm, I'm working on things. Um, and this time it hasn't been the case, so you haven't seen things in progress, but uh, c'est la vie at the moment. And that's just kind of like how it worked out. Um, so again, if you're a long-term watcher, you could, might be able to guess what I'm making because I've made it before. Uh, this one I am knitting out of this, which is Sanna's Garn Pure Gint, and it is a wonderful color. It's like a indigo gray denim kind of color. It is color number 6072, and I've used this yarn before for a anchor, my anchor sweater, which is was in a lovely mustard color. And I am making another one. So here we go. Here's my second anchor sweater. I've got one sleeve done and I'm a 
a little bit into the second, a good, well, I'm a good chunk into the second sleeve. And here it is. It's funny, both Caleb and Michael, so Caleb from Drowning and Yarn and Michael from Peace of Peace Crafting are both, I think Michael's finished his and Caleb is in progress with his. So we've kind of ended up doing like a mini knit along of the anchor sweater. This is the my boyfriend size version and this is the extra small size of the boyfriend size version. I mentioned when I made mine that the my boyfriend size sizes are like very large. Um, I'm five foot eleven um, and I'm about like I'm pretty slim and I'm the extra small size. So if you have someone in your life who you're making this for that is tall, um, well, if they're like, I mean, 5'11", 6 foot is considered like average tall size. So um, yeah, beware of the, the sizing because it, it does get quite large. And well, I mean, it depends if you want some negative ease. I mean, even with the extra small size, it's got a decent amount of ease on the one I have. I could pop in a picture of my one. Um, and even when I first made this, it was quite small. And my boyfriend tried on my one and he said the size is perfect the way it is. So, and he's a little, tiny bit shorter than me, but he tends to wear like a size up. I tend to wear smalls and mediums and he tends to wear mediums as it goes. Um, so, but he was happy with my extra small size that has been worn in. So I made it a few months ago. So I did kind of warn him that, look, when you first get this, it will probably be quite fitted, especially because the main feature of the pattern is the yoke, which is like this ribbed um, pattern. So on mine, it would definitely have relaxed a lot more from wear. Um, but yeah, so this is the yarn that's called for in the pattern. Uh, it is like a workhorse Norwegian wool yarn and I have loved mine like my I, I love it It's one of my most wearable um, Jumpers and I would have said that in my roundup and when I made it so I really really enjoy it There's certain things that aren't included in the pattern that I included that are kind of to me like Almost should have been included in the pattern. So first of all is the neckline she This is by Petit Knit. I don't know if I said that but she doesn't say anything about going down a needle size for the initial section of ribbing, which I did, to just pull that in. What she does say is that you can put elastic in it, but I don't know why they just didn't recommend using a smaller needle for the first ribbing section, because then it acts as the collar to pull in. So I've, I've, I did that in my original, and I've done that in this one as well. It is knit on 4mm needles, so I did 3.5mm for the neckline. Uh, the other thing is short rows. I added short rows. I've done this in, you probably, you won't be able to tell that much here at the moment, the way it's on. Um, so I did short rows. I used the flax pattern to add short rows. So what I did is I used the flax light instructions because the, and then I just matched the Flax is a free pattern by Tinka Knits, let me go back to that. And they have a separate document for adding short rows to that pattern. A separate free document. So there's the Flax and the Flax Light. One is, I think, Worsted DK and the Light is Fingering. And so what I did is I found the matching uh, stitch count for short rows and then used the instructions of that to make the short rows for this. The sh I put the short rows in before the sleeve split, so I did the yoke section, I increased the raglan increases, there's a couple of raglan increases, and then I added the short rows and then I split for the sleeves after the short rows. Um, the reason that works is because the beginning of round on the, this is in the back, middle of the back, and so the Tin Can Knits short rows instructions also have you do the short rows around uh, the center of the back. So that's how I added short rows. I believe Caleb definitely did it as well, and I'm pretty sure Michael might have done that as well. I can't remember. Caleb definitely did. So, yes. So I'm, yeah, there. The other thing is the sleeves are extremely, not extremely long, 
they are long. So by the time, and there are decreases in the sleeve, um, I knit all the decrease and then it, you know, for most top down constructions, it will say, you know, continue knitting to desired length before starting your ribbing. And I found that once the decreases are done, it's definitely long enough for the extra small size I have found. Um, so those are just some bits to be wary of when making this, but I'm super, super happy with it. I'm so excited to give it to my boyfriend. We don't tend to share clothes, so we probably won't share this, um, even though we're pretty similar sizes. Um, so this will be for him. He chose the, um, the color. He was happy with the yarn. He picked out the color when we were in Copenhagen and um, so he lo he's happy with the color. He's super excited. This is kind of his, I haven't made him something since 2020, so he was due um, a, a, a sweater and I made him hats, but a sweater. And this is, I wanted this to be ready for skiing so that he could have a nice, like super warm hand knit for our ski trip. And he deserves it because he puts up with me. <laughs> um, yeah, but I love this pattern. I would absolutely recommend it. People ask me all the time, like, oh, what's a pattern I can make for my partner or my husband or my boyfriend? I would definitely recommend this because this um, yoke is super flattering. It's flattering on everyone because kind of it obviously pulls in so it would be nice and fitted on your shoulders. So if you have lovely broad shoulders, it will accentuate that. If you have no shoulders, it will just flatter that. <laughs> so either way, I think it's it's just a really, really flattering pattern. So I do recommend this. He, when I asked him of the patterns I've made, which ones he would like me to knit him, his first option was the So Basic by Max. But I was like, mm, that is a fingering weight sweater. You're not getting that <laughs> just yet. I love you, but not that much. Um, I will make him one eventually. Um, but yeah, this is the one that was next up for him and I really enjoy knitting it and it's the first, I'm lying, it's not the first sweater I've knit a second time. I The first sweater I've ma ever made, the second sweater I made was the same pattern for him. I could probably show that to you sometime. He still wears it. Uh, even though I don't wear my first sweater. The nice thing with this as well is that there is techniques that I learned like the tubular bind off here. I did quite a short ribbing on the cuff here, um, but the tubular bind off I did here on the cuff, which I didn't do on my own. So, and I think the short rows on this one are better than the one on my own. So it's one of those things of like, his version is gonna be better than mine because I've kind of grown and learned things as a knitter since then. But I'm super happy with it. Um, yeah, can't recommend it enough. Uh, so that's the anchor sweater, my Boyfriend size by Petitness in Pure Gint. 6072 is the color. Okay, so acquisition time. I have a fair amount of it. The first thing was probably something that those of you that follow me and know me and know what I like would have expected me to have gotten a Christmas. However, um, through the world of shipping and Christmas time, things got lost uh, and uh, I thought that I wasn't going to get this yarn at all. Um, but through a like kind human being being kind, I managed to get this item um, in February. So it was Christmas in February for me. And the item is the, this, it is the La Bien Aimée and Les Garçons from Paris to Montreal uh, Winter Solstice Mystery Box, I believe they called it. Um, this uh, has been, I'm sure if you follow me, you follow them. So you would have seen all of this has been revealed. So I'm going to kind of move through it pretty quickly. Um, because there was a mystery knit along to go along with this box, which has been completed and now the pattern is out. But I would thought I would just show it anyway. If there's anybody who follows me and not them, they created the most amazing 
um, box that I got to open all at once. Um, so yeah, it was a nice almost Valentine's Day <laughs> treat. So I'm just going to run through what it came with. It we have a little sticker, which is obviously the art done by Max. There we go, it's focusing. So, it came with a sticker, the tote bag, it came with this um, ornament, which is wonderful, with like a sonic, not being, not being me. And then there were da -da -da, 10 yarns. So, I'm gonna bash through them pretty sick, pretty sick, pretty quickly. Um, so Vincent dyed colors inspired by Paris and Amy, Amy dyed colors based on Montreal. So I'm gonna go through them pretty quickly. So this is, uh, these are in absolutely no particular order. I was gonna do Vincent's first and then Lavin me. So this first one is a BFL sock and it's the color Yvonne's Cafe. That was some posts coming through the letterbox. That's why I stopped talking. I think it might be knitting needles actually. Next one is Christian's Tree. Super, super nice. Love this color. Then this is Gustave's Tower. Kind of similar to the Louis shade that I made my um, uh, single malt in, but it's definitely like got more lights and darks in it, I would say. And then this one, which is fabulous, is Immy's Dotted Rays. I think it's this is probably most people's, one of most people's favorite of them. So those are the minis. And then the full skein that came, which is, uh, so these are all BFL sock or Yak sock. And then this one is Surrey, which is 74% Baby Surrey Apaca and 26% Mulberry Silk. It's a lace waist and, oh God, it's in French too, guys. And French is really not my strong suit. So I'm just gonna show you the color, which is fab. So good. Look at the sheen, look at the depth. I'm obsessed with it. And then I'm gonna hold up the label. So hopefully you can read. It is, I'm sure it means nice something, nice of something in Paris, but I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna butcher it, <laughs> guys. Anyway, so this is, I'm just gonna kind of do a bit of this. This is the group together of Vincent's colors, which are absolutely fab. It's one of those things of like with Vincent's colors, you could, you could hold up this and be like, which dye made these? And I'd be like, it's absolutely Vincent. It's definitely his sensibility. Then, so they had two different bases on the minis and La Bien is the same, they did two different bases of the minis. So the first one is, where's the color name? Ah, okay, this is La Ville Souterraine. Oh my God, I'm so sorry, you guys. Which is blue. And I absolutely love how blue this is. That is in the Felix base. Let me do the other Felix. This is Vincent Loves His Neutrals, which we all know to be true. Absolutely fabulous color. Then Le Ur Doré is this one. This is in Helix. It would be La Bien Aimée without a, a yellow, would it? And then this is Belle Rose, Belle Rose. And this is also in the Helix color. And the difference between Helix and Felix is Helix is, hmm. Okay, so yeah, Helix is 75 Falkland Merino and 25% Gotland. And Felix with the F is Falkland Merino and 25% Corydale. These two though. I mean, they all kind of complement each other and contrast each other in a really cool way, which I really, really enjoy. And then the full skein from La Bien Aimée is in the Twist Nouveau base, which is 100% non-superwash 
Merino, again, it's another like really difficult French word, guys. Uh, le, le Vert Quebecois? So bad. The guys are going to be so mad at me. But this is the color. Which is just everything. Like, the two full skeins are just... They're too good, you guys. They're too good. Um, let me do a close up of the label, as you can see. Um, so yeah, so I'm obsessed with it. I think the phase or the full skeins definitely really jump out to me. And if I was to pull some colors that are probably are my faves, probably be this palette. The kind of neutrals and pinks and it's like a mix. So yeah, it would have been wonderful to open these one by one as the days went by, but I'm just happy that it finally made its way to me. So thank you, uh, Vincent in particular for uh, having my back and helping me out with it. And I'm so thrilled that it's here now. I am just, I don't know what to do. I'm so excited and inspired by it all. So yeah, if you know, anything that like us on do, I, especially something like this, like their creativity is something that's just so inspiring. And I love like being a part of or feeling like I'm a part of it. So any of their boxes or clubs or anything, I just can't recommend it enough. Uh, if you have the opportunity to, to get one, jump on it. Um, they teased something similar to the Mysterious Forest Sock Club in their latest episode of Happy Hour. So I'm really excited to see what it is because I will be first in line tapping to get it. <laughs> and so, so yeah, so that was, um, that was that. I, um, I'm so happy that it's here. I'm really, really happy to have it. And they did a mystery knit along, um, which at the point, like I still was receiving the pattern, which was quite nice, even though the box hadn't arrived and we didn't think it ever would. But, um, so the pattern is wonderful and it is like a really long uh, infinity cowl and they showed it off in the latest episode of happy hour as well like really really nicely so go definitely take a look at that i think i want to make the pattern but i don't want to use the stuff from the box even though it looks wonderful um i'm kind of like bubbling some other things that i'd really like to use it for and kind of pull the minis out and use them in different things. So that's the way I'm feeling right now. Who knows, we'll see. But the pattern that went along with it is now available as a single pattern as well. So definitely take a look at that because it's wonderful. Um, other acquisitions, I have more Labby Anime, I have more Le Garçon. So let's keep that going. Let's jump over to Labby Anime. The first thing I'll show you that I got from Labby Anime is on the bag here. It's the, the Amy pin. So I got that. My So unfortunately, because of Brexit, it's really difficult to get uh, stuff from Europe. And my brother was visiting, so I made him my yarn mule and sent him two skeins from La Vienne May plus the pin. The first skein is Felix, so it's the same base as some of those minis. And I got it in the color Direwolf. Uh, which is like, I think it's one of the Game of Thrones colors, I believe, that is now a permanent color. Let me pull the label down here, it looks a bit better. Silvery, amazing color. And I got this to make the Pure Mesh Pullover by James Watts. As soon as I saw that pattern being previewed, I immediately ordered this skein, even though the pattern hadn't been released yet, because it's so different to anything I've ever seen knitted and made that I really want to make it. I've got my needles, the pattern's out, I'm so excited to try making it, and this is the colour I'm going to use. And then the other thing I got was um, something that I have had my eye on since I learned what La, La Bienname was. It's like kind of the skein that inspired me, I guess, with this game that really, I really was like, oh my god, this is beautiful. And um, I've wanted it ever since. So when I was just going to get one skein, I was like, okay, let me get this skein that I've always kind of, I don't know, it spoke to me. So this is in the Twist Nouveau base, which is their non-superwash, 100% um, non-superwash merino. 
And I think they actually have this done for socks, or they made this for socks. But this is the color uh, Sailor Mercury, who, if you ever watched Sailor Moon, is wonderful. She is my second favorite Sailor Scout after Venus. But Venus's colors aren't really my personal colors, but yeah, I loved this. Again, it's kind of similar. It's not, you know, they're not a million miles away from each other, palette-wise, but um, yeah. I loved it. It was just one of those gains that I just really wanted to um, have, and in a non-superwash base was really, really exciting to me. Um, so yeah, I think it might be nice to have this in a shawl, even though socks would be wonderful too. So that's the La Bien Aimée that I got. So now I think I'm taking a La Bien Aimée break. I have plenty of La Bien Aimée to make things with, and I made the yesterday's years with the Cory Worsted. I have some Cory Confetti that I'm going to be knitting up soon, so we have lots of La Bien Aimée coming up, which is super exciting. And then the last Le Garçon thing was like in January, and I was in my like yarn buying ban as we all try to put on ourselves in January after we spent too much of Christmas. And I then, of course, the it's I have a list of yarns I want to try for the year. And in January, Le Garçon come out with a collaboration with Shibuya Knits, which is one of on my list of yarns to try. So I had to, guys, I had to. And I did resist. So they came out with um, a pattern collection and then three colors on different bases by Shibuya Knits. I'm just gonna look up the name of the pattern that I'm going to make. There we go. So I got a kit which came with uh, a pin and the yarn needed for one of the designs. I do want to make the Wind Whistles, which is a brioche uh, sweater. But at the time in January, I like did not have the funds to, it's like 200 quid worth of yarn. It's like so much. It's more of an aspirational project towards for <laughs> the future rather than something now. So for now, I just went with the um, night and day cowl pattern, and these are the two colors. And it's a super interesting yarn. So the yarn is called Nest, it's DK weight. And can't read, the two colors are Soiree and Rosé. And the third color is called Boreal, I believe. It's kind of like a green color. But Nest is very interesting. You can probably see best on this skein. It's like, it's got netting around the fiber. And I got this to make the cowl, which is a night called Night and Day. I will pop in a picture. And it, I wanted to support, obviously, I love to support Le Garçon. And I wanted to try the yarn, which is, you know, killing two birds. And then I wanted another kind of smaller, tighter cowl for skiing. So that's why these two skeins were what came home with me. So I have the pattern and once I finish the Curio socks probably this is what we'll be casting on next and it is a brioche pattern and it's been I've only done one brioche project before so it'll be fun to do another brioche project to get myself back into that with kind of down the line this year maybe doing that wind whistles pattern as well in the future so yeah I really really enjoyed it and the rosé is like a super like pale pink and then soiree is like Hard to describe, it's like a grey, grey with the smallest touch of brown, I would say, is how to describe it. Um, and yeah, so they're just two skeins from the collection, super excited for that. And then I'm pulling up my bag again because I got another pin, which I just mentioned is this one that they did. Uh, and this is uh, Shiba Inu for the Shibui Knits. And this is actually, oh, shut up. It's squeaking. <laughs> um, he's wearing the hide and peek, which is exciting now that I've got my own hide and peek. Um, so yeah, so that's the Le Garçon yarn, which we knits, which is super exciting. Look up the collection. The like the scarf is beautiful, and there's a two sweaters, a scarf, mitts, and the cowl. So I've got the cowl, but um, the two sweater patterns are absolutely wonderful as well. So I do recommend going to check those out. And then my last round of acquisitions, and then I will let you go. I'm lying, I won't let you go. I'll talk about some other things. 
So, um, I've gone a bit wild, you guys, but we're just gonna, like, you know, not judge, and we're just gonna keep the train going. So, I wanted to try some spin cycle, and I wanted to try the bases that aren't available here in the UK. So, I got them all. Uh, so here in the UK, I think you can, it's pretty easy to get like Dyed in the Wool and uh, Dream State. They're pretty readily available, but all the other bases are pretty, they're, I don't think they're available wholesale, so um, I, I haven't really found them around. So I decided to try. So I got two sweaters quantities worth of Spin Cycle, and I haven't, um, fully decided on the patterns yet. I have some ideas, but I will bounce them off you guys and see what you think. So the first um, base I wanted to try was their Nocturne base, which I've wanted to try for a long time because it is like their Dive in the Wool base, but it is not superwash. So I've really, really wanted to try that. And I got the color Moonshine. So I have four skeins of this and it is everything I wanted it to be and more. Uh, on Spin Cycle, because there's such variation between the skeins, you can, uh, when you're buying it, you put in a note to say, oh, I want, like, so this one is kind of lavenders, blues, browns. You could put in, like, oh, I want more brown scute skeins, or I want more lavender scute skeins, and I put no note. I kind of wanted to leave it up to fate. And all of my skeins are pretty, pretty similar to this, which I'm super happy with, because it's got that bit of blue, which is very me but then pushing me out of my comfort zone a little bit with the lavender and um, other colors. And to pair with that, I got two skeins of this base, which is their Wilder base. So, wait now, let me go back to Nocturne and tell you what it is. It is 100% Merino, non-superwash, 200 yards, sport weight. So it's like the darker, moodier sister. I believe it's a gray base that they dye on, whereas the Dead in the Wool is like, must be a white base. So then the next one I got was called Wilder, and this only comes in, oh, I didn't say what color this is, did I? This is Moonshine, I'm pretty sure I said that. And then the sport rate I got to match this is 100% um, American wool, and it is the base called Wilder, and it, this only comes in two colors, it comes in light gray and dark gray. So I got the light gray color, and I thought that they would be kind of fun super high contrast so it would be fun maybe to do stripes or to do color work maybe like a two color color work with this in the yoke and this is the main uh because i have four of this and two of this so we'll see and then the other two bases i got are the versus base so this is like a mild kind of base of theirs and this is i believe it's also I don't think any of these are super wash. So this is 100% fine wool. This is DK weight, and this is the color tobacco and rye, and it's called Versus. So kind of different for me. I do like a marl in general. I've used a lot of marled yarns in the past, but I really, really liked this. Thought it was cool. I also looked up like on Ravelry pictures of this and did it up, and I really, really enjoyed how it looked. And then the other um, DK weight I got, which you might have heard of if you've been online at all, this is metamorphic. So this is being used in Andrew Maury's latest pattern, which is the metamorphic sweater. Um, I got three skeins of this, uh, which kind of, which plus this is probably a sweater's quantity for me. The pattern actually uses this, which is DK weight, and the dyed in the wool, which is a sport weight. I don't have the pattern, so I'm not sure if one of them is held together or how it works, but um, I, I'm i not gonna make that pattern. Uh, it's, really, it's really cool, like I do like it, but um, there's the fit of it, I don't, I don't like the neckline that much. I do like the striping and the, 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 um, the, slip stitches because they're kind of similar to the curio sock in that way but in general I like it didn't it didn't vibe with me personally so um I'm kind of up for suggestions of what to do 
Um, so these two I kind of wanted to put together because I liked the kind of browns with the purples. So this metamorphic is the grey lavender colour. And metamorphic is a 50% um, recycled wool, 50% merino wool, and I believe it's an on super wash as well. So this is made using um, leftovers from their mill or like bits that are wasted and then they gather them together and then they marl them up to make um, this new wool, which is like super, super wonderful. And, you know, this is like the Cory Confetti. You know, I really like the fact that there's these really nice non-super washables yarns coming out that are using leftovers, you know. Um, it kind of matters to me that I try to make it stuff I make is really like as sustainable as possible and I try my best on that so I really really enjoy this. What I will flag is if you see this skein here can you see this and this uh, so Spin Cycle is like really really expensive like it's kind of known for being very expensive so I'm not super thrilled that there's a lot of this happening in mine um, I've had it happen before in skeins of spin cycle. Um, it is what it is. Um, it's just kind of like, it would be one thing if it was buried inside this game, but you can really see it like right there. Um, so I don't know. It, that, that's something that I was like a, a little bit disappointed about because like, I'm not probably not going to knit this into my garment. You know, I'm going to have to cut it out and rejoin um, or try and like spit slice it um, yeah not thrilled about it but what can you do what can you do um, but otherwise I'm like so excited about all of these I've, I've noticed that they are like a color family more or less it's like lavenders grays browns and blues which I guess is my vibe but pattern wise uh, I was thinking of doing the painting Rick's uh, sweater by Stephen West maybe with this uh, main color and then these is like the the spots uh, and then with this I was actually thinking of maybe just doing the so basic by Max and then striping so we'll see I'm like just letting the yarn take me and follow me and see where it goes with that but as of next episode I will and um, with what I've got from Unravel I think I have sweater plans for the year done you know I have enough I have maybe about six in total so I think that'll be enough to kind of um cover me for the whole year uh as regards sweaters so yeah so yeah that was my spin cycle acquisition um like i saw lab me lots of great stuff and the last thing i wanted so that's all the yarny stuff but the last thing i wanted to mention is a podcast recommendation um i have been watching mel asato who is big little yarn co uh she has cozy cardigans knitting podcast it is I've been kind of like binging a bunch of her episodes. She is from America, but she lives in Japan with her husband. And um, I, I love Japan. I've visited before and it's her, she kind of does like vlog slash podcasts. It's like super, super chill. She kind of shows you what she's up to and then she checks in throughout the week with how her knitting is going. I love her vibe I love her energy I love her makes um, I've really really enjoyed watching her and you know when I've had a really stressful day sitting down and knitting with Mel is super super enjoyable so I really really recommend her podcast and then that's it for catching up guys I know it was a lot a lot a lot a lot and it's been a minute so thank you for your patience and uh, waiting for me to come back and I will have the Unravel special episode up pretty quickly. I'm gonna shoot it pretty soon, like maybe today. And um, I have lots of news about what I got up to at the festival. And obviously I purchased some yarn at the festival and I met some wonder wonderful people at the festival. 
Um, and I also took part in the festival in a way, so um, stay tuned to hear how all that went. It was my very first year on festival, so it was super, super exciting. Uh, and in the meantime, let me know what you're knitting on. As always, I want to know what you're knitting on and I want to know how your year is going so far. We're into February. How are you getting on with 2022 so far? I hope it's going well. I'm trying to be as positive as I can about it, that things are like getting better for the world as a whole and I hope they're getting better for you too. Uh, I will see you very very soon because we'll do Unravel and then I'll have another episode pretty quickly and I will have probably lots to show there again because I'll have finished the sweater and the socks and then lots of little new things to cast on which I'm super super excited about. So yeah, thank you for watching guys. Um, hit the like button is super great and sending a comment is super great because I want to hear from you and chat. Um, some of you comment on every video and then I get really excited when I see your comment because we're like you comment every time and it's wonderful. Uh, I'm on Ravelry, I'm on Instagram, so you can follow me on both of those places as well. Um, Ravelry, you'll definitely get sneak peeks of like things I'm doing because I tend to update that. I don't really chat a lot on Ravelry, um, so if you do message me on there, please be patient because I don't check that very often. Uh, on Instagram, I'm always running around and posting stuff and being silly on there as well. So if you have Instagram, you can pop over there too. Otherwise, I hope you're really good, I hope you're healthy, I hope you're enjoying your knitting and that you're having a great time and yeah, I'll see you next time guys. Thank you so much for watching, bye!